before you tonight, Jesus, Lord. I just thank you, Lord, for your love and your mercy and your grace tonight, Lord. Again, we just ask you, Lord. Lord, you said that we could ask and receive, Lord Jesus. Lord, I'm not you by any means, Lord God, so I need you, Jesus. You don't need me, but I need you, Lord God. And tonight, I just ask, Lord God, for the remainder of this service. Lord God, if you would just begin to move in here, it'd be all right by me, Lord God. Lord God, if your spirit would fall in this place tonight, Lord, it'd be all right by me, Jesus. Lord, I can get out of the way, Lord God, and let you take over, Jesus. Oh, how mighty, Lord God, to see you working, to see you move, Lord God, how mighty it is. Oh, Lord God, we just ask tonight, God, that you would just move, Lord God. We ask tonight, God, that you would breathe on us, Lord. Oh, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, in your name, Jesus. Lord, I ask you, Lord God, to anoint the word. In your powerful name, I pray, amen. Hallelujah, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Again, I just want to give you a definition on the word mark. And there's a couple, of, as I begin to dig in this, amen, a little bit, I just, God's good to his people. Hallelujah. You can be seated if you can, if you want to, if you want to run the aisles, run the aisles. But this word mark, amen, just kind of stuck with me. And I just looked up the definition on it, amen, just to give to you. And it says, in a small area or a surface having a different color from its surroundings, a typical of one that's caused by an accident or damage, it says. Another definition is a line or figure or symbol made as an indication or record or something. It says, make a visible impression on or write a word or symbol typical for identification. That's what that word mark means. But David said here, mark that man, amen, that perfect man. It's not any man, but a perfect man. And I know sometimes if you look that word perfect up in the Bible, you're going to find that Paul and Peter in the New Testament, amen, I know that it's preached, Sister Shelley, that no man can be perfect. And church, that is a true statement to a point because by grace we will make it in. Right. By mercy we will make it in. I still believe <laughs> the word teaches you and I that we need to be baptized. Right. The word teaches us we need to be full of the Holy Ghost. This right. is... This is giving stuff. But I'm telling you tonight, church, Paul said this and Peter both. And the Bible teaches you and I that out of the mouth of two or three witnesses let every word be established. And I'm paraphrasing these two scriptures. You can look it up. But they say, accept this gospel, learn this gospel, amen, that we can present you perfect before the Lord, amen, is what the word says. And tonight I believe a man, if he's walking like he's supposed to, or a woman is walking like she's supposed to in the eyes of the Lord, amen, that person can be perfect. Amen, because it says in Job 1, it said there was a man in the land of us whose name was Job, and was a perfect man and upright, amen, right. and one that feared God and excused from evil. So it lets right. me know that they can be perfect, amen. But as I dug and begin to look at the word mark is what I kind of want to talk about tonight, not so much about being perfect, but the word mark, amen, because of the definition, amen, of identification, and a visible impression, amen, that I think that we, if we, Sister Karen, if we would take note for a moment on that word mark, amen, because naturally it takes you, you look in Genesis chapter 4, amen, and it talks about God marking Cain, amen, because he killed Abel, amen, and he was a, he was a marked man from that point on that nobody could touch him, but he was a marked person that he took another man's life. He has sinned before the Almighty God. Amen. So, in, But in the book of Revelation, there's something that I looked up, that I, I took note of, and I, I want to run this little sequence. We, if you want to write them down, you can go back and study them. Amen. I don't, I don't want them. I don't know that I'll hold you long tonight because I kind of ain't trying to push this message, but 
I want to get to the book of Jeremiah if it be possible. Amen. Right. But, the, but the book of Revelation, when you look at chapter 13, amen, verses 16 and 17, it talks about being marked, amen, with the mark of the beast. Amen. That's 666, the mark of man. Amen. And we know, uh, looking at this, we can go back to these definitions and know that we can find a definition talking about being marked uh, with, that, with that number. But in Revelation 14, 9 and verses 11, it tells you about what if you take the mark, what the consequences, amen, behind, amen, taking that mark. Amen. Revelations 5 and, or 15 and 2 talks about the ones pointing out the ones that got victory over the mark, Sister Karen, amen, where they would be, amen, because they sit back and didn't take the mark. Amen, that they would get victory over. But 16.2, amen, talks about the angel beginning to start the torment of the ones, amen, repercussion of the ones that did take the mark, amen. Again, we can go back to these definitions to find, amen, writing a word or a symbol, amen, typical for identification. So if you take the mark, amen, you're being identified of being one of Satan's, amen. Right. If you take the name of Jesus, naturally you will have a mark of identification, amen, to be right. with Jesus, amen. Right. It's real simple, amen. Right. It's living for the Lord is real simple, church. Hallelujah. But the Bible says in Revelations 19 and 20, this is where the torment that Jesus throws uh, Everyone that has this mark, amen, the Bible says, into the lake of fire, amen. But in chapter 20, verse 4 of Revelation, talking about the reward, amen, of the ones that did not. Uh, there was a chapter I give you on the victory, amen, but there's also a chapter on the reward, amen, of those that did not take and receive the mark of the beast. And tonight, church, amen, there is something about this where David said, Mark, the perfect man, you and I need to have an identification. You and I ought to have purpose Amen. in this. They ought to be able to mark us as godly men, Sister Shelley. Amen. And godly women. Right. Amen. They should be able to mark you as a minister of this gospel. And I know you're going to say, well, I'm a woman and I or a man, and I'm not called to preach church. Amen. The word commands us in the verse chapter of Acts, uh, amen, right. to go be a witness. Right. Uh, and you'll find out as you begin to witness, amen, you begin to minister. And as you begin to minister, amen, that anointing will come on you and you'll begin yeah. to preach to us, saith the Lord, amen. Right. amen. So everybody's called because that's what Paul said yeah. for us to do the work of what? An evangelist, amen. You say, well, Brother Kenny, you keep mentioning all of these things, well, the Bible teaches me, amen, that I must preach these things. The Bible teaches me, amen, that I must take the flock, amen, and I need to push them to their level, amen. I need to show them what they need to do, amen. Hallelujah, to obtain, amen. We're not here, amen, to occupy space That's by right. any, mind, any means, right. church. But we're here to move, amen, and push this kingdom forward. Amen. amen. I can't find anywhere that Jesus stood still and Come said, on. I can't. Amen. I've done enough. Amen. I'm content. Amen. By just a woman with the issue of blood touching me. Amen. And me healing her. Amen. I'm just content being in Lazarus' house. I'm content, but I wasn't Jesus. Jesus went everywhere that he could in those three and a half years that he preached. Amen. He went everywhere. I believe that he, he nicked out every corner. He went to all four corners that he was able to get to church to get this word out. And I believe we're posting to be the same. Amen. But if you want to go to the book of Jeremiah with me, amen, I'm going to be in the 23rd chapter of Jeremiah. Amen. There's something there that I would love to show you. Amen. Hallelujah. Mighty God. Give me a minute again. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, right there. Hallelujah, mighty God. Hallelujah, he's a mighty God tonight. Amen. Right. Jesus. Mighty God. Hallelujah, this word may not stir you like it does me, but I'm telling you, when the Lord gives me something, amen, I love to hang on to it. Amen. But amen, if you in Jeremiah 23, amen, I want to read about the 15th verse, amen. It says, therefore, 
thus saith the Lord, this is Jeremiah talking, concerning it says the prophets, behold, I will feed them with wormwood. If you look up wormwood, what wormwood is, amen. It's bitter, amen. It's an herb, amen. Hallelujah, that it, it will, if you put that anywhere around anything, Sister Karen, it will make it, it may, will make it bitter. And it said it will make them drink the water of gal, amen. For the prophets of Jerusalem is profaneness, it says, and go forth and do all, amen, the land, it says. Right. And if you'll look at that word profaneness and that N-E-S-S, -S, you'll find it that it's worthless, amen. They ain't nothing to it. But he said this in 16, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart and not of the mouth of the Lord. Amen. Amen. They shall steal. It says they, should, they, they say steal unto them that despise me. Thus, excuse me, the Lord has said you shall have peace. And they say unto everyone walketh after, their, the, after the image of their own heart, it says here, his own heart. No evil shall come upon you. And the word teaches you and I, church, amen, that we have to follow after the Lord. Right, but the Lord, one thing, God. church, that I try to hold of is this verse 18 because, amen, the Lord is beginning to speak, amen, and beginning to say some things here that you and I ought to get a hold of. He said, For who have stood in the counsel of the Lord, amen, and hath perceived and heard his word, who hath marked his word and heard it, amen. Yeah. The Lord is asking, amen, Israel, asking Jerusalem, Sister Karen, who has stood in the counsel of the Lord, amen. Right. Right. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something. Uh, Sister Ursula, some people can preach. And some people can say that they're Christians, amen, and do everything that they want. But I'm telling you tonight, church, you walk on deadly ground, amen, if you ever sit up and say that you've been in the presence of the Almighty when you ain't been. When you begin to say that the Lord said thus and thus, and the Lord ain't said thus and thus tonight, church, I'm telling you something right now, you are walking on deadly ground, amen. amen. But not only did it say who stood in the council, amen, but who hath perceived and heard his word. Right. That's something that I want to preach just a few moments to you, amen, to elevate you to a place, amen, to give you something, a gold nugget tonight, Sister Karen, amen, that you can leave this place. That word perceive, what it means, amen, is to become aware of conscience or the conscience of something, amen, come to realize or understand interpret or look on someone or something in a particular way. Amen. It's when you stand, church, amen, in the presence of the Almighty. Amen. And Sister Shelley, it's when you begin to receive, amen, what that, not only receive it, amen, but understand it, amen, what God is wanting you to do, what God is wanting you to say for Him, amen. Sometimes we get, uh, we call it a charismatic movement, amen. Everybody wants to get the music a little bit louder than it should, amen. Everybody wants to clap a little faster than they should, they want to stomp feet, they want to begin to yell and holler, thinking, amen, that's going to stir up the Almighty God that I serve. But let me tell you this, church, the Word says this, that the Lord will not turn away from a contrite spirit or a broken heart tonight, church. And I believe he said those that worship him has to worship him, a true worshiper would worship him in the spirit, amen, and in the truth is what the Word tells me tonight. So I believe that somebody that really wants to get in that presence, that really wants to perceive, really wants to understand, that really wants, thus saith the Lord, it's going to cost you something, amen, tonight. Yes, yes. Amen. And you may come up wherever your prayer closet is, Sister Shelley, and you may go to that closet 20 times, and you may pray for everybody that you can think about praying for. You may pray for Obama. You may pray for third world countries. You may pray for hungry countries children, abused children, amen, and you may pray, 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 and leave that prayer closet, and just want to say, if you want to call it check in the box, and I pray today, amen, but sometimes it can come on the 21st time, it can come on the first time, 
Amen. It don't matter. God shows up when he wants to, church. But the one thing that I know is when he shows up, church, amen, it's for a purpose. Amen. And he wants somebody to take heed and proceed when he speaks. And yes. take that word and let that word be of value. Let that word be sacred. Let that word be precious tonight, church. Amen. Because when David said, Mark, the perfect man, I believe David stood in a place when he worshiped the Lord, amen, when he prayed to the Lord, amen, that he got his answer, church. Amen. I believe this with all my heart. That's why that man was favored, amen, because he knew how to worship. He had a hungry heart, amen, to touch his God. And tonight, you and I, amen, ought to be in this place, amen, to where, amen, that we want to touch the heart of God, that we can be born as a perfect, amen, man or woman of God for him. We ought to want to be in that place tonight. I look at this word sometimes and I ask the Lord, Lord I need something, amen. But if you look at verse 19 it talks about behold a whirlwind comes and the Lord goes forth in a fury. Grievous whirlwind it says. Verse 20 says this, that the anger of the Lord shall not return until he has executed, until he has performed his, the thoughts of his heart. But look at the last of this verse here. It says, in the latter days you shall consider it perfectly of what the Lord does. Right, amen. Some people don't look at earthquakes the way I look at them, Sister Carrie. Some of the people don't look at tornadoes the way I look at them. And, 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 and hurricanes, wildfires, planes dropping out of the sky. Church, it's just judgment, amen. It's the whirlwind of the Lord moving, amen. Because if we were in a place where we were supposed to be, if America, all this world, amen, was where it would be, amen, we know that the Lord, amen, would not bring judgment. He would not let destruction, amen. He wouldn't let your heart be sorrowful, amen. He wouldn't let these things happen, amen. But he he is in a place, amen, that he has anger, church. But he says, I have not sent these prophets, yet they have reigned. I have not spoken to them, yet they have prophesied. Right. But look at verse 22 with me. Because mm -hmm. here's the word but, because we've got to change direction. If they have stood in my council, and have caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil ways and from their evil of their doings. You think about what I've just said. And we wonder why there's corruption. We wonder why we where we at. Amen. Because if the men and women are called, amen, to the ministry. And I've said it before about Daniel. And I've said it before about Nehemiah. And I've said it before. My God. If we would take ownership. And say Lord. I'll go send me. Did, did Job take ownership. And say it has to be me. These problems. It's not the God that I serve. It has to be me. Think about what I'm saying. In that church to you. Oh, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Hallelujah, mighty God. Sister, are you able to come up here and let us pray for you? Are you able to walk up here? Hallelujah. Y'all come on, let's pray for her. She's, she's hurt. She's in misery. Hallelujah, mighty God. Oh, mighty God, mighty God. Come on, sister. You able. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, mighty God. 